Let's start with that idea that there was a little bit of, you know, something for everybody in that statement, although it did seem decidedly bearish at the end of the statement. But what yeah. did you take? Well, the statement came out and said, you know, they nodded to the fact that interest rates take time, yep. typically seven quarters or so before they get, hit the real economy. So the market rallied on that. U.S. dollars sold off. And then Powell came in and I think delivered a fairly hawkish message, um, not talking about pivot. Rates have to go higher. And the biggest thing, and I think the thing that is most important is that they're going to get to a point, whether it's four and a half, five, and then they're going to stay there. And they're going to stay there until they see material evidence that inflation has, has been cracked. And I think that is the, the part that, you know, that's where you're going to get a real, you know, a real dampening of economic activity, um, being in a restrictive period for a long time. Something we haven't really seen um, for, for a long, long time. No, we've been in low rates for a really, really long time. It's right. the complete opposite. That's so, right. yep. yeah. So, I, and, I, and it's interesting because it's a whole mindset in terms of how businesses operate and economies operate. Right? Totally. Well, and households operate. I mean, yeah. we are, we are leaving an era of ultra loose money, kind of tepid growth, but an asset price inflation. If you think about, you know, housing and whatnot. Um, and to an, in a world where, you know, if you're going to borrow money, uh, it's going to cost you and maybe think twice about consumption decisions. So I think, I think economic growth is going to re rely on investment more so than pure consumption um, because I think people will, will pull back. I mean, look at, look at le lease rates on a new car. Um, yeah. it, was, it was one a year ago. Now it's five and a half, six percent. And so that's going to really change the mindset of consumers, particularly at this is here for an extended period of time, which I, I don't think we're going to sit at these high levels of rates for a few years. But, but I don't think that as rates start to come off uh, long term, I don't think we're sitting on a 1% or 2% rate handle anymore. Um, mm. And that is going to be, a, 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 will require an adjustment by both businesses and households and governments yeah. and how they operate. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, the interest expense alone for governments at this point yeah. is going to be uh, through the roof. Um, let's flip on the, some opportunities in here because, you know, not great for equities, but the fixed market is starting to look a lot, you know, I've heard from you and many other team members, it's starting to look a lot more interesting now. Yeah, well, first off, <laughs> fixed income returns, when you look at it like in a pyramid of annual returns for the last 100 years, I'm pretty certain we're in the worst year you know, in the last hundred in terms of fixed income returns. Yeah. So that's a little bit un, you know, unnerving, but ultimately it hits the opportunity set in the sense that um, there's actually income now in fixed income. I mean, if you had a, a portfolio of, of investment grade bonds, government provincials, corporates, you're looking at 5%. And, you know, that, that's, that was two, one and a half, two, not so long ago. So there's actual true income stream from, from fix, fixed income. So, you know, there still might be some volatility next little while, sure. But, you know, if you buy a typical portfolio of bonds today, they're all most trading below par. So the actual return stream is probably half capital gain, mm -hmm. so tax, tax efficient. And, and, the, and the coupon or income that, you know, as, as bonds mature and are refinanced are at much higher rates. And so uh, there's quite an opportunity, I think, for income investors to look at this and, and start acquiring, you know, I, I, again, we're still not out of the woods, still going to be volatility for a quarter or two. But, but ultimately, when we're sitting here 12 months from now, I, I think fixed will, will have done okay. Yeah, it's hard. I mean, we all have our own recency bias, yeah. what we've been through to it's say. Terrible. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's not a great time. But let me ask you, <clears throat> take me through the next year, if you would, um, in terms of, you know, do you still see volatility? I'm assuming as the earnings come out from companies, we're still, as comparing to last year, it's going to be hard. You know, the bar is high still compared. You've got midterms. You've still got, you know, the world doing what the world's doing. Mm -hmm. So what kind of, what should we be buckling up for and getting ready for over the next year? Well, I think just to draw on Jerome Powell from earlier, he did mention a number of times how there is a tremendous degree of uncertainty about everything they're saying. Yeah. There's another way of saying nobody knows anything. Yeah. It's, it's really tough right now. I would say a few things. One, um, would expect to see a continued bear market in equities for a couple of quarters. We haven't seen a trough in economic activity. And I think you need to see a real bottoming out of the market. I would expect that to come around mid-year, plus or minus a quarter. Uh, on fixed income, certainly near the, we are near the end of this hike, hiking cycle. You know, whether it comes in you know, February, yep. March, it, it, we're, it's within sight. Um, and then you know, what could happen? So a few things. One, uh, U.S. midterms next week. Um, likely see divided government. Yeah, which is generally good. I ironically, yeah. yeah, not to be too cynical, but ironically not good for, for society, government. but for the markets. Uh, within the Ukraine situation, I think it's entering a period of, of status uh, where you could see a stalemate. Um, there will be pressures. Either side is going to be hard for either side to get a lot of material advantage here. And so a stalemate there. Uh, and we are, will be at the end of this hiking cycle. So 
those are three actually pretty bullish things. And so I, I would expect the first half of the year to still be a, a bit of a struggle for risk assets. But I think in the second half of the year, things look good. We're working on our capital market assumptions right now. So our kind of our longer term predictions for stocks. And, you know, not surprising, um, they're higher than they were last year because of the, of the weakness in, in markets this year and, and where we are in the, in the, in the growth cycle. So I, I think it's going to be a, still a period of, of choppiness. Um, but as we start to, to reset the economy, back half next year might not look so bad. Hmm, interesting. Um, but volatility, again, you expect that to continue. Uh, and I, I want to ask as well, but it's the inflation story. I mean, a lot of people have been pivoting and looking towards commodities. Seeing that story, it looks pretty compelling with more just like the structure of energy changing hmm. and those types of things. Is that something that's an interesting area as well? Yeah, I'm from a longer term view. Um, you know, I'm, I'm pretty simple. I like to keep things and, you know, Un, they're fairly understandable. With commodities, there's two things. One is that we haven't really invested in new supply for a long time. And today, with environmental concerns and, and governance concerns and just trying to, you know, safety concerns, very, very hard to, you know, build a new mine. Um, there's not a lot of uh, support to exploit new sources of, of fossil fuels. Uh, and we're not really at the point in time where renewables can take the, you know, the handoff from fossil fuels. So there is a deficit on the commodity side. On the flip side, we are going to need to reinvest in infrastructure in cities. I mean, I think climate change is real, and ensuring cities are built to withstand hotter periods or colder periods is real. And so there's going to be a real lot of demand for commodities as well. And so you have a bit of a perfect storm in the commodity markets. Um, years like this year, where you have a real struggle in fixed income and, and equities, commodities have been positive. So they do also provide material improvements to a multi-asset portfolio. So we like commodities. We're obviously building out a group there. Um, but see, this is not so much a next year thing. It's more of a kind of a 10-year idea, quite frankly, uh, plus that. And that's typically how long commodity cycles go, 10, 10 years. And this one likely longer because of the lack of a supply response to, to tight markets because of, uh, because of the challenge of bringing new, new sources of commodities online.